So today we are going to review the Vocal Head Booth by Thoman. And if you don't know what this is, maybe you've heard of the Isovox Vocal Booth, which is which claims to be an easily collapsible and expandable vocal booth for your home or wherever you actually need a vocal booth because it's, you know, you're working in an untreated room and stuff. And um, the Isovox Vocal Booth is probably the most uh, well-known one. Um, it, it claims to just treat your, not your room, but your recording space. So that you've got a space that you can work in and your recordings will sound much better than in an untreated room. And right now I'm standing in an untreated room. I'm standing in my living room and I'm recording handheld with an SM7B, which is something that you should never do. <laughs> it's really heavy and it's not meant to be used handheld but it's the best um, thing that I've here right now. And it's probably one of the most well-known vocal microphones in terms of speaking and you know, recording vocals and stuff. So this is a pretty high quality and well-known speaking microphone so that you get an idea of what this thing might sound like. So this is untreated and this is obviously without the vocal head booth applied. The Toman vocal head booth is just a head booth, so it's smaller than the Isovox, but it also is the total opposite of the Isovox in terms of collapsible and expandable. It cannot be unmounted, uh, so you cannot take it apart. You can take it with you. I mean, you can take it with you. You get it back for this thing. Um, it works for you know taking it with you in your car or whatever, but it's probably pretty hard to take it with you. Uh, via train or whatever. It's just big, but that's not what it's meant to be. So uh, then again, it's pretty affordable compared to the Isovox. And I've heard that the Isovox has some flaws with its building quality, especially when it comes to the back plate, which is everything except the back plate. Um, the Toman is all around just solid. Like, let's see here. Uh, let's get closer to this thing. So it's really I don't know what the actual uh, the actual numbers are in terms of size, but it's actually you know let's let's knock on it's not wood, so it's five centimeters thick uh, walls plates that this thing consists of, uh, which are meant to absorb the sound, and these are soft and kind of a tiny bit squishy, and they're warm. Let me tell you, it would get warm inside really quickly. And um, that's basically it. So you mount it onto a stand. It comes without a stand by default. You can buy it with a stand in a bundle. It comes with one of those PA stands from, what's their name? Roadworks? Roadyworks? Something like that. And um, the backplate is actually movable. So we will do some test recordings in a second with uh, backplate in and out, just for comparison. Um, what this thing doesn't do, and it doesn't claim to do that, is filter out incoming noises from the outside. That's what it doesn't do. It will filter, or it will muffle, or, you know, it will clean up the recordings done inside, um, but it will not filter incoming noises from the outside. So, for example, you can, uh, maybe you can hear it, I don't know, um, to the right of me, there is my workroom, and... In there, we've got servers running and PCs and everything, so there's quite a bit of ambience going on. And outside the window, there are cars um, right at the street or next to the street. So that means you always have to care for unexpected car noises from the outside. But we are not sitting next, directly next to it. We are sitting a few meters away from it, uh, or standing actually, right in the middle of my living room. So. This might not be a problem, but it might as well. Okay, now I'm standing in front of this thing. Um, it's actually pretty rock solid. Um, and uh, you just have a little bit of metal, which is the stand mount and stuff. Uh, I've got the stand that comes with a bundle. I've got the bag too. Um, I mounted it probably for my, for my size, which is fine. Um, another thing that I was told is that the microphone mount in the Isovox vocal booth is not kind of good because they built in 
a, a microphone mount, which is not universal enough to work with all kind of microphones. They did this in a better way with the Atomon Vocal Head booth here, which is they just have a kind of a slot uh, in, the, in the bottom part of, of this booth where you can slide in your microphone and you can bring your own your own uh, stand and just mount it there. Um, I won't do that. I would just slide it in. <laughs> I won't set up a stand here because it's just a quick and dirty recording and testing thing. And yeah, thought I, I'd tell you. Uh, in there you find a magnetic thing holder for paper or I don't know, tablet kind of thing or whatever. And you will find one for a light. So if you want to read because you're a sighted person, feel free to, to do that. It's actually meant for things like that. Okay, so here again, the only thing that can actually take away from this thing, like remove the only thing that you can unmount is the back plate. You can push it up, which sounds like this, and then you'd open it like a door or you just take it out, close it again. Now let's get in there and record something so they get an idea of how it works. Now that you've heard my untreated group, let's turn with the back to the whole open room so they get an idea of the reverb effect that's going on here because it's absolutely untreated. My my ground is also bad. Like it's really old flat. And whenever you move, it makes squeaky noises. I pretty much like this. It's a little bit atmospheric. But uh, it's bad for recordings, obviously. Okay, anyway, let's move in and see how it sounds from the inside. Oh, hey, here we go. This is the vocal head booth. Obviously, it's not 100% clean. I especially can still hear reverb. Uh, that is mainly coming from the outside via the open bottom of, of this thing. Um, because it kind of sits on my shoulders, actually. But it's still open because you've got some bigger room. You can move in this thing. And so that means that it's not closed. Like, you don't closes obviously you need to get some air from from somewhere so it is still open um but not around you but further like to to the right around your shoulders basically is where sound is coming in and where sound is leaving this booth and uh, this is where i can still hear some reverb but i'm actually um looking forward to listening to the recordings because i don't know how they will sound in terms of uh Reverb. Can you still hear the reverb in the recording is the question. Now, this is the recording with the backplate in, and I'm just talking in a normal level, right? This would be most likely a level, volume level, which you would record a podcast at, or maybe even a, an audiobook or something like that. That's also not <laughs> the level, uh, the sound level, where you would record vocals, like sound singing vocals with. And I would just get a little bit louder in a second. But another thing that I would show you is how it sounds with the back plate pushed open. Let me just remove the back plate here or open it up. Okay, I now removed the back plate um, so much that it still holds in place, but it it's not blocking the sound going out of this vocal booth. Depending on your surrounding space, this might open up your sound in terms of um, dryness, if that makes sense. But depending on your environment, like me, uh, I've got a pretty reverberant environment. That means that a lot of the reverb is coming in. And I don't know if that's preferable. Depends on the situation, I guess. But sometimes you might actually need the extra distance. For example, if you're screaming at the microphone because you're trying to, I don't know, record some screaming vocals, whatever. Sometimes you need the space. And it's great that you can push this thing out. So that's good to know. Yeah, so I'm standing here. I'm doing this hands-free because I can. This thing is sitting on the PA stand, which comes with this thing. And uh, backplate is out. I'm just standing here. I find it actually pretty doable. We do have a hook kind of thing where you can hang your headphones or whatever underneath this thing. Pretty useful too. And um, that's more or less all there is to say about this, about this thing. Um, can move around a little bit. Don't know if that changes anything on with the sound, I guess, because the microphone is just so sensible. But uh, yeah, I, I just put in this backplate again. 
Here we go. Try recording. And I've heard that if you if you are a bit um, louder, it starts to get boxy, which you will have to treat with an EQ. So let's get a little bit louder in here. I will most likely have to treat this with a compressor, or whatever. But uh, if you if you're recording a little bit, a bit louder, this might in the end actually result in a sound that might not be preferable or actually uh, what you'd expect from a from a book booth like this. But it might also be exactly what you're looking for. I don't know. I would just be a little bit louder and see what happens. Um, I'm not a vocalist. I mean. I kind of am like not as bad as I thought with singing, but I was actually planning to record things like that in here. Uh, maybe I will let you know as soon as I've done the a cappella song that I was looking to do, um, and uh, I will record it in here so that you've got an idea of what I'm doing and how it sounds when recorded within this vocal booth. Anyway, I hope this was helpful to you. I hope this demo was uh, kind of enlightening. So the Walker Head booth comes at three. 98 euros or 345 pounds and it's therefore much more affordable than the isovox which is more than double the price maybe that might be an idea for you uh, in terms of you don't have a treated room you know your vocals sound bad but you want to create professional recordings and you want to want to get something that makes you sound more crisp more dry more professional, and I'd say this is more affordable than the Isovox, and it's, no, it's not portable, you can't take it with you that easily, but then again, it's all around just a solid product, and um, it's worth its price, I think, uh, or that it looks like it from build quality, I don't know if it's the same thing with the actual recording quality, let's find out together, shall we? Thanks for listening.